So when there is no therapist, what to do will inevitably fall to you. And I'd remind you that as medical professions, your words mean a lot to your patients. So do choose them really wisely. This is why Barbara's question of what does a patient think a good outcome would look like is so vital. If we choose a goal that's meaningful to the patient, then they'll be prepared to work hard to achieve it. Help them by setting a short-term goal that may be achievable. Encourage them to try bilateral activities from early on. As we've mentioned, it can help with cortical remapping. It can also help to reduce edema. It can improve strength and suppleness in the surrounding joints. And something as simple as trying to make a fist has been shown to actively recruit the rotator cuff muscles of the shoulder. And as Anoush explained, this is vital for positioning the limb in space. Carers may really want to do everything for the patient to, to make them um, feel better, but as if you can explain to them that these tasks, and be specific about the ones that you do and you don't want them to try, are in fact their rehabilitation exercises, they may look at them differently. So simple tasks like folding their clothes or holding a bowl can help the patient to develop their independence again. Compensations will of course have to be used. If a finger has been shortened, then a simple pinch is no longer possible. A lateral pinch against the, against the index finger, finger will still be good, and using the thumb muscles we've show, can show it increases the activity in the wrist stabilizers and ECU, so as a whole it can give an upper limb strengthening effect. Exercises can be modified by changing the range of motion they complete, by adding resistance or changing the speed that it's performed at, and by using assistance. So don't forget to break a task down so they're starting with a smaller range or a lighter weight or assisting it as they'll all be able to help the patient achieve their final goal. Again, don't forget to check what you think you've told them um, and if that's really what they've heard, it's worth checking and ask if it feels achievable to the patient. If it doesn't, it probably means we haven't broken it down enough for them. When you're discharging home, you may to need to ensure that the patient still understands specifically how to help a wound heal. And a number of people do misunderstand that when a scar is formed, it will stay that way forever. So explaining to them the value of passive movement, scar massage and positional or night splinting might help them to comply. If they understand that this dorsal scar has many months still of maturing to do, they might be prepared to say, wrap on the old dorsal hood that they've had since theatre, um, that can be having a positive effect on scar length for several hours a night then. And I've seen these made from plaster of Paris, cardboard, banana leaves and glue, paper mache, so don't let a lack of formal splinting material stop you advising it. Ensure for the same reason that you encourage passive movements and that the patient understands why. If they can see that a supple joint will make it easier if a nerve starts to re a muscle, again, they'll be more likely to comply in the longer term. And I cannot emphasize enough, please watch the patient demonstrate any exercises you've given them. This is a picture of a very diligent patient who I fell into the trap of explaining to. I thought I'd perfectly explained how to do a gentle stretch, and he took that to mean two 10 kg sacks of sand on his hand for half an hour. So make sure, as I say, you've seen, you've seen what they're doing. And lastly, if there's any possibility of a take-home reminder, home instructions really can be useful. So it can be as something as simple as this. This is one that we use to help illustrate how to look after your limb if there's a plaster on and to reduce edema. Um, and you can simply circle ones that are appropriate to your patient or cross out ones that are not. But again, I'd really make, ask you to be careful about phrases like not until later or when it's better or stronger. These are meaningless to a patient. So if you are trying to encourage them to wear a splint for three months or for a year, then if you explain wrap this on every night, take it off every morning, and do so until the start of Ramadan, that would be more specific. So make it something that's relevant to the patient. The learning outcomes I hope that my slides are helping you to achieve are being able to make a sustainable rehabilitation program. Thank you.